Hi, I'm Gary from LawnAeration.com. I'm here to do a review on the new Ryan ZTS aerator. It's a stand-on machine. It's a direct competitor uh, for the Xmark uh, 30 inch stand-on. Uh, first thing we're going to look at uh, is we're going to compare on this review uh, items that um, that are the same and different uh, compare and contrast from the Xmark uh, which used to be a lawn solutions machine and is now a Toro Xmark machine. These new Ryans uh, have just came out in 2016 and initially I thought they were the same machine off the same assembly line as the Xmark machines with just a different brand on the side and I've come to find out they're significantly different so let me show you a couple of the things I like and dislike about the differences um, first of all the physical differences of this machine um, the specs on paper you'll notice are very similar you'll find that they have the same almost the same identical travel speed the same aeration uh, pattern holes per square foot um, really close in weight all the features are the same what is different about these machines are start with they have one size larger engines they have a Kawasaki FS 541 uh, where the Xmark I think has a 441 um, and Xmark uh, I do own uh, some of the Xmark equipment um, I do own an Xmark uh, stand-on 30 inch and I find out that it is uh, just slightly underpowered in some situations when you're going up and down hills and whatnot. Uh, so that, that hopefully will help in the long term of this machine. I'll show you a couple other things that I like better to start with about the Xmark machine. Um, the Xmark machine I like a little bit better because with the Xmark there's a foot pedal control right there that actuates your tines. Uh, the tines are powered hydraulically to force them into the ground. On this machine, however, I find that there's a thumb switch on the operator's panel. Other than that, the operator's panel uh, is similar. Um, the parking brake, actually, I like a little bit better on the this uh, Ryan machine uh, because it's easier to handle. On the Xmark machine, you have to pull up and slide it and sometimes that's tough to do. Um, the, the pull mechanism is very stiff, so you really have to work on that on the X mark. On the Ryans, I like this better. Um, these little guards right here, I notice sometimes they can get in the way if you're sort of in a hurry. Uh, and on the tine actuation, um, the Ryans do it with a switch right here. If you push forward, it sets the tines in the ground. If you push backwards, it raises them up out of the ground. Like I said, the X marks have a switch low on your foot. Uh, some guys think that this is irritating. You have to put your toe on the button all the time that you aerate because uh, they say it's, you know, your leg gets tired. I don't notice that. Uh, what I do notice is on the Ryan machine, when you're in different obstacles, you might have your hands here or over here. You always have to slide your hand back to the middle to actuate the tines up or down. Another thing I noticed is when you're wearing gloves, um, I had gloves on uh, and when you're wearing gloves I could see especially this being the case with thick gloves the switch right here is is a di bit difficult to feel and as you push on it you don't get a very positive lock so once in a while I would notice on my turnarounds or if I was coming down a slope to a curve and I wanted to hit the switch quickly I noticed that I actually missed the switch and it didn't engage or disengage right away and I had to go back and hit it a second time uh, so that's one thing that I really prefer on the Xmark machines. I like the toe button a little better than I like the thumb switch because you can keep your hands in one spot and you can easily lift up or push down with your toes uh, on the Xmark machine. However, you know, as you get used to it, a learning curve, it is sort of nice that you can just switch it and not have to worry about holding your toe down. Uh, the other nice thing about the actuation is that you can actually move left to right or displace your feet um, for instance right now I'm on a slope uh, so it's nice if you're on a slope to of course stand on the high side of the machine uh, like this um, versus the low side you know on X mark you're always stuck with one foot up here uh, so that's something I've noticed what I really like about the production or the manufacturing of this machine uh, is that X mark machines are difficult to work on um, you'll find with Xmark machines, 
the the belts are all up underneath of the machine the chains need lube there's about 14 or 16 grease fittings you always have to mess with this machine is very user friendly uh, or I should say mechanical friendly um, to start with all these adjustment knobs right here or all these knobs are access panels so you can just take these knobs off and as you do that uh, you can access the chains underneath um, there's knobs by the tires that allow access to side panels there's knobs um, underneath where these carriage bolts are under the that you can reach with your hand underneath to take this top panel off and that'll access your pulleys and belts as you can see right there, there's an accessory two-inch receiver in case you want to put a spreader or a seeder on this machine. Uh, Xmark also has that. Um, these side panel knobs are all over the machine. Uh, all over so you can access different parts of this machine. Uh, what you'll find is that if you have limited trailer space, you can lift this up. The carriage put it just like that you can actually operate the machine as a walk behind unit also uh, or as a ride on machine and you just pop it down like that uh, what I did notice in the operating position of this machine is the operating position on this Ryan is uh, a bit more slanted forward so when you operate the machine your body actually is leaning forward a lot more as opposed to on the X mark, you're standing more straight up. Uh, I find that your knees make a lot of contact right here unless you lay your whole, you know, belly on this part. Um, you have to really concentrate if you don't like to lean up against this to sort of stand on the back of the platform, which is I do. Otherwise, your knees are constantly bumping into the bottom of this. That part, as far as an operator comfort standpoint, I like on the X mark much better. Um, when you're standing here, this platform on the Ryan machine is a lot lower, so you have to reach your arms down farther to reach to all your controls. The X mark, they sit up higher and you stand up more straight. Uh, so the controls are more accessible. To me, it's more comfortable to ride. Uh, what you'll find, they've put on a transmission cooler uh, from the hydrostatic transmissions, uh, which is nice long term. Hopefully that will keep your train, your hydros going longer. Uh, a couple of things that they've added feature wise, one of which are these little pins. If you see this chart here, this attack uh, controls your max time depth. Most of the time I find this is sort of redundant and unnecessary because you can use this knob right here just like an Xmark machine has, as you tighten it in or loosen it out, you can adjust your pressure. The higher your pressure, the deeper your tines are penetrated into the ground. I find that on this Ryan machine, about 400 is right. I find the machine starts to work a little too hard if you go above 400. Uh, I like to run it uh, right around maybe 375, seems to get good performance without working the machine too hard. Um, a couple other things I like about these machines, the tires. The tires are a larger size tire than they have on the Xmark machine. On the Xmark machine, it is the tires are very small, which makes uh, it tread very lightly on the grass. However, to negotiate a curb, like we see here, you cannot walk up that curb with an Xmark machine. Uh, you definitely would have to find a way around. Uh, so in a situation where you have islands to aerate, like this, um, you can rule your X mark out unless you bring some ramps with you. You're not going to get over those curbs. This riding machine, you have to be careful, uh, but I think you can probably navigate up over a curb a little better because of the tires. Um, what else I've found with the machine, uh, with this time depth control, is... The machine will operate just fine with this pin removed completely. And all you have to do is take this pin out of the back side, like this, pull this out, and move it down to wherever you want. And then you'll set your tying depth from two to five inches. Um, now five inches in, in an irrigated lawn or a soft lawn 
is okay, but you know, in most lawns, that's going to be unobtainable. Um, just because the ground surface is too hard, you're going to overwork the machine trying to get it there. Uh, I've tried this. I've tried this machine at almost every depth and combination. I've tried it almost every depth and almost every combination with depth and pressure. And I find your best bet is to leave this thing, um, you know, around the three and a half inch mark and run it usually around 375 psi does a great job you pull some some decent sized plugs like that these are plugs i pulled out um, running it at three and a half 375 psi as you can see the plug um, pattern works pretty well there's a lot of plugs you know i've I've played different ways, adjusted the settings differently. You know, this is this is at about 200 psi. What I found is when I got over 400, it was about too much for the machine to handle. Um, I've had belt issues and things when you overwork your machine, like the X marks. I notice if you if you use too much down pressure, you will overwork the machine, and you actually burn your belts up, and it's hard on the hydros and hard on everything else. So it's good to keep that in mind. Um, let me show you in here real quick, this access panel. They come off really easy, quick and easy, just like that. This little panel here is a bit tricky to get off. Uh, once you get it off, you have to rock it up and sort of up out of the way to get it out of here. Once you get it out of here, the machine looks like this. And all your tines and whatnot are in there. Um, if you look in here, you'll notice this machine is quite a bit more simple than the X-Marks where you only have two chains coming back here. With an X-Mark machine, you have three chains that come back here, three chains to maintain. Also, every one of these bearings on an X-Mark machine gets greased. There's a grease fitting on the top on half of them and a grease fitting on the bottom other side. So you have to come in here weekly Grease all of those bearings, then you have to climb under the machine, grease all the other bearings from the underside of the machine. That's one thing I really like about this machine, they put sealed bearings on it. However, the negative to that is sealed bearings are non-serviceable, so when they go out, you do have to replace them. I do notice they make these somewhat easy to replace. There's a carriage bolt on each one of the bearings, um, and that carriage bolt, if you take that out, it will slide out the bottom. Each one of these shafts are independent. The middle one spins freely, while the outside ones are driven by chains. And they actually put a little access panel here that's nice so that you can access and oil your chain. I thought that was clever. Xmark doesn't have any chain guards inside of theirs. Um, so you just clean and oil your chains. I do that weekly. Um, on this machine, I'll start it up and I'll show you how the process actually works. Safety, brake on, starter up. Now on this machine, you can actually just flip the switch and the tines will go down. That actually sets it in the ground. And that's all you need to do when you're setting the machine is to flip your switch. Flip it off or on. They take about one second to engage. Off, on. So you can kind of see how the machine operates that way. I'm not going to do this right now because of time sake on the video, but I'm going to show you that you actually can use the tines to push into the ground, and the and this Ryan machine has built-in jack stands, and they're right here. All you have to do is lift this little guy out of the way, like this, pull it out, and that jack stand comes to the bottom. So what happens is you push down, you set this jack stand in the bottom, put your pin back in, and the pressure of the tines 
will push the uh, machine's back wheels off the ground. Then you can set the jack stands in. And from that point, you can change the tire or you can freely move the wheels. Or if you're trying to oil the chains, you can get in here and have free rotation on all the tines. Uh, what I've noticed is on the X-Mark machine, you have to do that manually with a jack and you find yourself getting your floor jack out at least once a week when you're trying to oil the chains and such. Uh, overall, I'm pretty impressed with this machine. Of course, it just came out, which, you know, any piece of equipment usually has hiccups and problems when they came out. Um, it's August um, of 2016 right now, so we're out here just demoing this machine. Uh, I gave it a good uh, up and down. We've worked it a little bit on a mild slope. Um, you can see we worked it on a slope some. We've worked it uh, on straightaways, bumps, around obstacles. Your turning radius with the tines in the ground is about three to four foot. Um, you don't want to try to actually zero turn it uh, with the tines in the ground, but it seems to function pretty well. I'm pretty excited. Uh, so hopefully that's helped you out with this. Um, I guess if you prefer to um, have a little better uh, user comfort, I think the Xmark machine is a great product um, and they do the job and they do it really well. Uh, I don't know how this will perform long term yet because we've only had it out on demo. However, if you like accessibility uh, and you, you like easy maintenance on your machines, I think you should best look into a uh, Ryan. Uh, as a side note, the Clawson machines that are red are also made by Schiller Manufacturing, uh, which you'll find Schiller Grounds Care. They also uh, own Clawson equipment now. You'll find that Clawson equipment um, is... Clawson equipment, I think, I haven't seen one in person yet, but I believe the Clawson stand-on aerator is an identical unit to this Ryan except for red paint. So it might be something to look into. Uh, hopefully this has helped you out quite a bit. Uh, I also note one other thing I read in the maintenance manual. There's a, a lot less maintenance on these machines uh, from a standpoint of no greasable bearings except for a couple points right up here. Um, that helps a lot. There's uh, an automatic chain tensioner, which I forgot to mention. Uh, the X marks, you have to do your manual chain tension. Uh, and you have to do that about every, I find about every 50 to 80 hours you have to do that. Um, on this one, uh, there is very there is one tensioner back here um, that's an idler uh, sprocket that you have to tighten. But the main drive tension on this machine is self-adjusting so you don't have to worry about that for the life of the tensioner um, you also notice that I really have had belt problems with the Xmark machine uh, however and to do a belt on an Xmark machine is anywhere between about a 45 to a two hour process 45 minutes two hour process with this machine you can take this panel off you can access the belts right under here it's really nice um, we're going to try this machine out maybe in about a year or so. I'll let you know how it's performed. Uh, one other thing I will notice, and I'll give props to the Xmark people. I've always liked this about their mowers and their machines. The front caster wheels on an Xmark are a semi-pneumatic, meaning they're foam, non-flat tires. They're foam-filled. On this Ryan, these are pneumatic tires, so you are prone to more holes in the tires. Uh, something to consider. Uh, when you're looking over a machine. Right up in there you see a bit of the um, spring for the chain tensioner. Everything on this machine is pretty accessible I've noticed. From a maintenance standpoint this machine is hands down superior to the Xmark. Uh, from a comfort standpoint I would grade this one about an 8, a uh, 7 or an 8. I would probably give the Xmark about a 9 to a 10 on aerating comfort. I know this the platform when you're aerating is not as comfortable as the X Mark. It's slightly rougher ride where the X Mark is more of a Cadillac. Uh, hopefully this review has helped you out. Um, hopefully that uh, you can you know make your decision. Uh, I would strongly recommend demoing either machines if you're gonna buy one. I would demo the X Mark and the Ryan. Um, 
there's the drain for the oil um, other than that they're very comparable machines uh, personal preference but um, I've showed you some pros and cons thanks for watching